I said something last night so awful that I have a feeling it's going to haunt me the rest of my life. We were talking about Katherine Hepburn, and I said, not a typical woman, as you yeah. said how great she was. And by that I meant, of course, there's no Hepburn type. I mean, there's only one. Will there's you, only one. Would you agree with me I on that? I will certainly agree with you. There's only one. Where'd you first meet her? I first met her in, uh, I think it was in London, oh. uh, en route to Africa for the African Queen. Yeah. I had not known her before. And I was, of course, very uh, excited and kind of apprehensive and didn't know what to expect. And I remember it seemed that... I, I don't know whether it was before a press conference or something, she and Bogey were going to... There was, there was some kind of a press conference call for the film. Mm -hmm. uh, this is before we left for, for the Congo, what was then the Belgian Congo. And uh, so Bogey and I went into the... the uh, Claridge's, I think, was where she stayed. Yeah. And upstairs, and rang her doorbell, and she opened the door, and she had just washed her hair, which Katie does regularly, mm -hmm. more often than most people. And she had it wrapped in a towel, and she said, oh, well, I've got something, wait downstairs, I'll be a few minutes, blah, 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 whatever. And that was my introduction to her. And I thought, oh, my God. She was, you, know, uh, you were intimidated a little bit by, just because you'd oh, seen her so I, much in the Well, I was because, because I had always admired her tremendously, and I saw her on the stage from a second balcony when she was in Philadelphia Story. And um, I just didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and we became friends on that film, but it, it took a while because she didn't know what I was about, what, or certainly what Bogey was about, or Houston was about, and mm -hmm. I didn't know what she was about, and we, so we were all kind of feeling our way. Yeah. But um, She refers to you as her buddy uh, on, on the show we did together. She yeah, said, uh, I love her. there I was in Africa with uh, two drunks. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a John Houston and Bogart and, uh, and, her, and her buddy, Lauren McCall. Oh, yes, I adore her. Somebody told me uh, opening night you got flowers from uh, an old friend of yours, Catherine Hepburn, true? Whom you admire greatly, I know. Well, Katie is a very good friend of mine. Um, she's uh, godmother to my young son, and um, we've been friends since 1951, African Queen days, so that's... Uh, a minute or two. Oh, that was a great picture. Oh, that was good. You know they had that on cable the other night. Did they on played, cable? Oh, well, I mean on the satellite, uh, whatever. You're it is. kidding! I thought it was, but I've seen it on regular television. So I guess they've taken it off and then oh, announced. It was, it was so good. What yeah, a it still is picture. good. Wow. Yeah. I must say, between Houston and Bogart and Hepburn, it would be hard to do better than that. I don't really pay any attention to labels. I don't. Uh, the, the only thing that I've really not been happy about in my pigeonhole, the pigeonhole section of my life, <laughs> is uh, when I have been called tough. Because I, I don't think that strength means tough. And I don't think that to prevail and survive means being tough. You often think of women who have those labels as uh, strong, independent, uh, as bitches. Yeah, but see, I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't think we're... I, th I mean, I know I'm not a bitch, and I know that Katie Hepburn is not a bitch. I don't know about any of the others, but I know about the two of us. But I know that in life, especially when you're a woman on your own, you have... you develop a kind of veneer that protects you. She looks a fright, her manner is objectionable, and she has no talent. That's what they were saying about her 60 years ago. My father taught me how to deal with overly male men. Don't react, just say yes, then don't pay any attention. <laughs> At RKO, she wore trousers and refused to cool like a starlet. They called her Catherine of Arrogance. Said the director, George Cukor, she wasn't a screen actress yet by any means, but she had the same thing then as she has now, precision. Kate said, acting isn't very difficult. I mean, Shirley Temple could do it at four.
she first met Spencer Tracy on the set of Woman of the Year, she said, I'm afraid I'm a little tall for you. Don't worry, Tracy answered. I'll cut you down to size. <laughs> 1951, The African Queen. I know the whole story. The producer, Sam Spiegel, told Bogey he had Houston and Hepburn. And he told Houston he had Bogart and Hepburn. And he told Hepburn he had Bogart and Houston before he had any of them. And that's how he got all of them. Said John Houston, Katie was being rather stern and stiff with the part. So I told her it should be played not as a schoolmistress, but as a great lady. You know, chin up, onward, ever onward. Katie asked me, what great lady? So I had to think. And I said, Eleanor Roosevelt. That was the goddamnedest best piece of direction I have ever heard. He just told me exactly how to play that part. When the script for the film version of The Lion in Winter came to Peter O'Toole, he said, it occurred to me that there was only one actress on the face of the earth who could play Eleanor of Aquitaine. So I sent her the script. And the telephone rang within days, and the voice said, do it before I die. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. had made an impact, whose friendship has made a difference for you. It's a danger because you leave somebody out, but go ahead. Well, I know. Well, I would say certainly John Houston made a great difference in my life. Uh, and Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy made a great difference in my life. How? Great plus in my life. Tracy and Pluses. Hepburn together? And individually. Uh, in both bogeys in my life. Uh, and then afterwards, after bogey died, they remained my friends and uh, were very important to me because they understood so many things, you know. I like, mean, Spence understood a lot of things about torment yeah. and... Guilt? Kate, yes, all of that. Yeah. And Katie understood, uh, she just understood a lot of things and she was a great friend and it was, I mean, uh, it was very valuable to me. You were very close to Catherine Hepburn. Yes, but Katie, Katie at least lived to 96. Yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't, she wasn't just whisked out of this world at a very early age. And what did she like about you, do you think? I think she liked the way I behaved when Bogey was ill. I think she liked the way I was in Africa. When they were doing when the we African Queen? When we were making queen. African Queen, because I'm totally unpretentious, and I'm very like Katie, and then I am what I am, and that's it. And then, of course... After African Queen, then the four of us, with Spencer and Bogey, who always liked one another and respected one another, we spent a lot of time together. And then after Bogey died, I mean, she's totally adored Bogey. After he died, she was really, really upset and really very careful with me. She was wonderful with me. I'd like to tell you another kind of well, rather peculiar and funny experience I had with her. It's much, much funnier now than, than it was at the time. In 1970, we both received Tony nominations for the best performance by an actress in a musical. She was starring in Coco, and I was starring in Applause. She called me the night before the Tony Awards were to be presented, and she said, Darling Bet." When my name is announced as winner, <laughs> would you mind picking up my award for me? <laughs> true, absolute truth. I'm not making it up. You can imagine, I was in, I was in shock for a minute. <laughs> then with my mouth hanging open, I just finally 
stammered, oh, oh sh sure, Case, <laughs> absolutely. I thought to myself, my God, if it happens, what would I do? Horrible. But I got even with her. I won. <laughs> However, and this is the best part of the story, perfect case. Early the next morning, my doorbell rang, and what was delivered to me was a framed self-portrait of Kate, <laughs> filled with endless compliments and congratulations on how deserved it, deservedly win, the, receiving the award was, the Tony Award, that I should have gotten it, there was no question, and this wonderful stuff she wrote about me. And she had painted this self-portrait. It's so extraordinarily disarming and not charming, but loving. <laughs> and it really took me by surprise, but it's very, very touching. But she had, had to do something quite extreme to, <laughs> after what she asked me to do. I was privileged to see her close up and to know her, to see the many sides of this beautiful, fragile, strong, sensitive, loyal, pure, very complex woman. Always surprising, she is uniquely, was uniquely one of a kind. There never has been and there never will be anyone like her.